just measured that angle. I'll just quickly show you what I've done. Let's come back in here. Got that length on, lovely. I've just measured from that edge to the corner. I've done it three, four times, top, middle, bottom. Make sure I'm all right. Now it just comes in just a fraction over 10 inches, top to bottom. It's not running out, which is brilliant for me. 10 inches, what, 250 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut off that width of paper from the full width of paper. So I'll have two pieces. So I'll have a piece that goes on there. It'll overlap round slightly by about a fraction, quarter of an inch, if that. And then when I come to put this one on, I re-plumb it with the laser liner. Get my laser going up and down again. Re-plumb it, use the horizontal to make sure my pattern matches from the corner, because obviously pattern matching there to the next one, because it's a straight through match, won't be any problem. So my next piece there would be re-lasered and plumbed. So we go from there, cut it, overlap, rehang, go over what you've um, overlapped, then start again. Then that piece that's on there will be a true plumb line. And then you can go all the way down the wall again. But I'll just show you how I cut the paper. So pin it back through. I'll pass you over to my um, cameraman, Brian. Just holding it. All right, so what we've got here, which you know, no, you won't do. Because I'm on there. I can see it. All right, so I've got my paper. I've swiveled it round because the good edge is the right hand side. I want the right hand side as a good edge. So I've lined up the paper edge against the board edge. That'll give me my straight edge. So I've got my ruler, proper box ruler made of plastic. I've got just over 10 inches. So I'm lining that up there, just over 10 inches. Use your finger as a guide. That goes against the edge of the board. Pencil, that goes there. Top to bottom, because I'm true all the way down. That'll give me the line I want. So I'm going all the way down. Shuffle it up, line it up again, match back up to where your pencil was before, just over 10 inches, at 255 mil, and I'm going all the way down again. Now this, camera up, this is the piece I'm going to cut off, gives me two halves, the left hand side while the right hand side goes on into the angle, that one goes out of the angle. So, are we all understood? I'm now going to cut that with shears from the bottom, like so. Sharp shears, keep on that line all the way along. all the way up, keeping the eye on it, nice sharp shears, it's easy to follow that line of a pencil, don't come off or else you'll get a shark spin, I mean shark spin, you can take it off and then come in and not get it right, so you can get a little bit of a missed cut, so I'm following it all the way up, if you're slightly off the line it doesn't matter too much, because don't forget this is the edge that's going to go into the angle and then back out as an overlap. So come up there and hold that there. Just show you all the way up. Done. Easy as that. That's how you properly cut a piece of paper off a full width. So just over 10 inches there and then the rest will be the rehome. So that's that. Thanks, Brian. Brian's been with us since 1966. 1966, think about it. Came at 15. Yeah, he says he came at 12. Thanks very much. Right, back with you just explaining those last two pieces that I cut on the board. I cut one off, got it into the angle. Using the camera. Got it into the angle nicely. And then the off cut, place there so it was quite easy to keep your match going on this because it's next to you but when you do a cut into an angle it's not so easy to follow it round to make sure it's perfect now when you're doing 
pattern matching. Sometimes walls can run out that throws your paper out. Uh, it's always good to have a rule of thumb that makes sure that your paper matches really at eye level. It's no good having it matching at the top and by the time it gets to the bottom, it's run out half an inch, 25 millimeters, uh, two and a half centimeters or more. You might as well have it matching because if that's still how the wall is, might as well have it matching where everybody's going to see it when they walk into a room. So roughly around about the five foot, five and a half feet, six footish area, that's where you want it to match in. So we've got the first one on, second cut was there, joints are very good, I've got those down, I've just got a seam roller that's just on the floor, I've just nip them down, make sure they were down. Gone over with a damp sponge, warm, just in case any paste have got on the paste got onto the face. Now the angle, because we knew it was good, because it measured up quite nicely. I've got the laser liner back. Laser liner's on a, a pole. It's a standing pole. It's a pole for using a roller. It's good as a support, because I can make it longer or shorter as required. Well, let's spin it around here, so you can see what I see. So I knew what width the paper was. It was there. I hung it to the corner, because I know it wasn't running out. Dropped it down all the way down into the angle, put my laser on it, and it was spot on. I knew it would be because this wasn't going to be a problem wall to me. Sometimes walls run out, and if it runs out and you get it matching at the top, by the time you get to the bottom, there's a gap because it's not there. So what you have to do is take it off, put that paper on into the wall, and hang from the bottom up. And then where you'd have the overlap of paper, unfortunately, you have to trim it off. There's no, no getting around it. You've got to do it like that. But at least you know this was good. I've got the laser on it, the verticals are spot on. Now when it came to getting the horizontal from coming in to out the angle, I found the spot of the paper on here. You can see there's a little white line. So I lined up the laser on the horizontal to that little white line and made sure I was getting the laser on that little white line coming out. It was just a fraction off. Wasn't happy with it because you know how critical I am on my own papering. So I re pulled it off at the bottom repositioned it so it was matching there to there. Because don't forget, this half of this first length is the same as that. It's not there, but it's there. So I matched it up there, matched it up there, made sure it was all down, used my little spatula, plastic spatula, went over with a hanging brush, made sure all the air's out, cut it at the bottom with my straight edge, same at the top, quite happy with that. Can't do any more as a straight edge plumb line to that. Now my next ones, I'm plain sailing. Probably got about five, six lengths. Matching up all the way. Won't need a plumb line on that. Straight to the next corner. And then we do exactly the same as what we've done here. And that's how it works. And hopefully, fingers crossed, using this laser, keeping that match on that line the same, all being well, that will follow me all the way around the room to this corner here. And that's where the actual pattern will be running out in that corner. I'm not worried about that. So I think we've covered it all for you. You're going to be an expert paperer like I am, aren't you now? Expert paperer. Wow. But no, not everybody does papering. Um, it's coming back into fashion. It's where the money can be earned, papering. Um, charging. You obviously charge for the job done. You work out your hourly rate. You work out how long you're going to be on the job. Work out your hourly rate accordingly. For the papering that you're doing this isn't this isn't 10 quid an hour stuff this isn't 15 quid an hour stuff this is top end when you start coming to papering particularly when your papers i've got a feeling this is about 60 70 pounds a roll and i'll be a bit more than that so yeah high-end stuff demands high-end quality work and that's why we're being critical with getting the laser on getting the angles right making sure angles are down i put plenty of paste in that corner it oozed out when i put my spatula across it get it down wipe it off you're doing a top job this is where we want to be we don't want to be banging we call it slinging paper i don't want to be calling it slinging paper that sounds like you're not caring i'm caring about the job that i'm doing i'm making sure this is right for the customer keep going back checking the joints making sure they're tight the foot joints all the way if i feel that they're just starting to spring on top of each other just try and move it back get your seam roller down on it they're not going to do because i've done it as i've came to it but this is how you should be doing it doing it properly Hope it's um, a benefit to some people. But yeah, what we're talking about today, using this laser liner, 
helping you get in plumb lines. Now your big advantage of using this is when we come over to that window, we'll be able to get a laser across the top of the window up and down and it'll also do the bottom, something you can't do with a plumb bob. And that's where you're gonna find the advantage. So let's call it a day, thumbs up, comments, subscribe. Thanks for listening. I'll crack on with this room and get this done now. See you on the next one. Bye bye. I just wanted to show you this brilliant example of a corner running out. Now we've come down this wall, you see, it's all plumbed down at the bottom end. Bottom, well, bottom end was all plumbed, so we followed it all the way along. Now I've come to this angle. I've measured this piece here into the angle. Top, middle, bottom. I've actually done it four times. Now the widest part of that paper to the corner was just over 11 and a half inches. Now that was at the bottom. So I've cut the piece off the main roll at 11 and three quarters. I've allowed going into the corner and just wrapping round, so quarter of an inch. Now, if I can get down low, that there is the width. Let's focus. Can you see me? Focus. Is how far I want the overlap to be. Just about to, can you see me yet? About a quarter of an inch, if that. Just only slightly. But as I come up, that overlap gets wider and wider and wider and wider till I'm at the top that's nearly half an inch overlapping now you're going to say to me Phil what do you do in that situation well I don't know I'll have to google it I think I'll google it and find out right we're not joking now right what I'm going to do I'm going to run a pencil down at a quarter of an inch all the way down so it matches up with the quarter of an inch overlap that I've got at the bottom now once I've got that pencil mark I'll just run a blade carefully because I don't want to go into the lining paper and into the plaster underneath I'll cut through that take it all the way off and that will give me an overlap matching all the way top to bottom so that will be good now your problem you're going to get is when I get the laser liner back up and plumb a line down here because I've only got well I've only got that width so that width will be going on that wall there now when I hang that paper to the top the pattern's not going to match it's not it's never going to match it won't match because we've cut something off of it but as you go down you'll find it'll be mirrored or opposite so we'll be fine up at the top we won't need to cut anything off by the time we get to the bottom there'll be an overlap onto that wall of about an extra half an inch so so long as that well as you're looking at it left hand side under that there here out there is plumb and you get your laser line and matching your pattern round so take that pink line all the way around and it comes here as long as that's matching and that is plumb you'll just be trimming off a little bit of paper on the bottom salvage but you know that that's plumb that's plumb and your horizontal's right and this is where we come into bad plastering and i won't say it's bad plastering it's just somebody's not really thought about getting a straight true angle and this is what the decorator's coming up against we've got angles running out but you've got to know how to get round it and getting round it is getting into the corner right there let's put that down getting into the corner seeing that the overlaps more at the top than the bottom and dealing with it so we're going to trim that off because we don't want to see a big fat underlining paper underneath the top of the paper you only want to see a fraction which i'm calling quarter of an inch it's easy to understand quarter of an inch so we're going to make that a quarter of an inch hang to the top make sure that's plumb just there all the way down at the bottom i know it's going to run out and it'll be on top of itself and I'll trim that back off because then I'm trimming into the angle and what you'll do is just gently with a HB pencil mark it all the way up until it starts coming back onto itself where you're not trimming anything off pull it away trim with your shears jobs are good dead easy right thanks I'll show you some photos when I've done